Hello and welcome to Stage 2 Music. Today we're all about solo performance, in particular on the bass. And I know you bass players hate soloing because we like to sit in the background making up a groove and just be out of the limelight, even though it's the coolest instrument and everybody loves it, but they just don't want to admit it, don't they? Anyway, regardless of that, you still have to do a solo performance for Year 12 if bass is your instrument. And what you've just heard me do is my attempt at reliving my Year 12 experience back when Moses played quarterback for Jerusalem in 2005. Amazing Grace by Victor Wooten. That bloke is a legend. And in 2004, when I was in year 11, I was introduced to this particular piece when he performed it as a solo act while he was touring with Bella Fleck and the Fleck Tones. And I remember my bass uh, teacher showing me this video and I just jaw dropped. I could not believe it. So I started learning it and uh, I performed it in year 12. I started learning it in year 11 because that's how long it took me to actually get it right and then I've picked it up recently again for this uh, video and um, relearned it after 15 years of not playing it so it was interesting anyway my name's Oleg Zodernchuk I'm here at home in my teaching from home battle station I have my coffee very important I have my talking points also very important and my motto here is the best way to learn music is to make music because none of us learn how to talk by reading first. That Having said that though, reading is also important in life and in music um, because if you want to be proficient at something and take something up, like for example a writer wants to write, if a writer wants to be a good writer they have to read a ton of books. Same as a musician, if you want to be a good musician you got to learn, when I say make mu making music is the best way to learn music. Making music mean, doesn't just mean composing, it means playing other people's music, playing an instrument. Just do something that makes music. And I'll tell you what, learning this piece was a huge learning curve. It took me a good 18 months back when I was in high school. So my, even though my motto is um, the best way to learn music is to make music, that doesn't mean we should ignore learning how to read music, which is really important. Um, speaking of reading music, I do have this piece on my trusty tablet here um, which you can buy from the internet it's just a PDF you can download pay a few bucks for it um, and it's an official solo piece for the bass um, like I said earlier I did this in my year 12 solo performance I can't remember how I did it how, how I did what, what grade I got but um, it is a difficult piece to learn um, Victor Wooten himself um, He's a big proponent and a big um, encourager of people to just to take up music, just to start playing it. He says that he learnt, he started learning when he was two, but he actually started learning even earlier than that because his brothers were always playing around him. They gave him a little toy guitar to play. So this whole idea of surrounding your life in music is very important. And I think, and if you watch him on YouTube, I'll link it down below. There's a TED talk he does where he talks about music being a language and that's what kind of the philosophy and the motto comes from in in my view and the way I teach anyway that's besides the point going back to this piece it's no secret that this piece is all about harmonics now if you've never played harmonics as a bass player it's a whole new world so for example it's like a little chimey sound Hear that? And the way you make that happen is you don't actually press the string down because if, say, I'm on the D string, fret 5, and I press that string down, I get the G note. But if I let, don't press that string down all the way and just kind of hover my finger over that fret and then pluck it, it becomes an, a D note. So where the G would be if you play it normally, the harmonic is a D. So there's a chart you can download that shows you where all the notes are. But on the Amazing Grace chart, it actually maps out those notes for you. And they're, they're drawn not as a circle like you normally see notes, they're a little diamond. Okay, that's how you know you're meant to play a harmonic. And um, 
so this this song combines both a, hum, a melody and harmonics and a bass line in the just normal notes. And the reason why this took me so long is because the muscle memory required to remember all those harmonic positions and the um, mental uh, mental um, strain it get, takes on you to play a D where normally you'd play a G is it's a, it's a lot to wrap your head around. So I encourage you, if you want to do a piece like this for solo performance, start learning it early, get exposed to it early. I mean, if you really try it, you could probably get it done within six months. Um, if you're really good, even less time than that, if, if you're proficient or if you have more time to practice. I used to practice about an hour a day back in back in high school. So, and that's, it took me about 18 months. But, you know, I was in, in stage band and all these other things. So I had other songs to practice. So if you're in the same boat, start early, get this thing rolling early. Um, um, the most important thing um, that I found helped me with this song is separating the melody from the groove. So especially when the... So what helped me was learning that melody first with a metronome. And with that, then, you'd, then you learn the groove separately. However it goes, yeah. You get the picture. So what I'm saying is, if it helps to separate those two, because the whole idea of this song is to make it sound like there's actually more than one person playing. Someone's playing the melody and somebody's playing the groove in the back. So if you can separate the two and learn them separately and then bring it together, then you're going to have a better shot of making it groove and making it sound like it's meant to sound. Um, the other thing to note is the first and last section there's a bit of freedom in the rhythm so you, you don't have to be so rigid there's no groove um, especially right at the end you can do you can play around with the feel a bit there and see what you feel when you play um, I certainly did I even added some extra notes I got a lot of notes wrong and I messed up the groove in the middle there that's your challenge I want you to listen back and have a listen where you think I mess, messed it up. Um, now, just before I keep going, I just wanted to mention the, the most hardest part for me in this song was um, the little run with harmonics. That there took me a good three weeks to just sit there practicing. And if you noticed, even after all the years and Playing this as a solo performance in that recording, I actually messed up the timing of that slightly. So practice it and practice it and practice it. And um, I could have done another video take, but I decided not to because I've actually I've been practicing this song so much in the last few weeks is that I've got blisters in my fingers and I'm just not giving them enough time to heal. Now, I play bass on a regular, so you might be wondering why have you got blisters if you, you already sh your fingertips should be calloused. Good question, if you're paying attention, the reason I've got blisters in my fingers from playing this song is because to get the best sound out of your harmonics, it's better to play them back here up near the bridge. So I'll play them somewhere between the, the bridge and my pickup. Sorry, my microphone keeps swinging away from me. The bridge and the pickup. So if you notice, if I play them here versus... They're more crisp when they're played here. Now, of course, the, the string at this side, this side of the instrument is a lot tighter. So I've rubbed up a, um, a blister on my fingers to because I'm playing closer to the bridge where I'm normally used to playing around here. Or even, you know, um, so it uh, takes a lot of the strain on you. So this is why another reason why you should start learning the song early is that you can give your time, fingers time to um, callous, get these blisters sorted so that you're not leaving, leaving it to the last minute having to play through the pain like I've just had to. So um, yeah, something else to keep in mind. Now, that's a good segue into the, my next talking point is the actual instrument and the amplification. I'm, I'm a big believer that as a guitarist or a bass player or any, really any instrument, 
you and the instrument are a package deal. This is very much an extension of myself and your instrument is an extension of you. It's important that you um, find, an, for especially a song like this, you find an instrument that you're comfortable with playing and it's a, a semi-decent quality instrument because harmonics on a cheap bass are near impossible. And uh, you know, in year 12, I played it on a you know a mediocre bass. It wasn't it wasn't anything flash like this thing right here. This is this is my baby. But anyway, um, it, but it was a, a a profile silhouette Fender Precision bass copy. So it was a Japanese made bass. A nice instrument. They're actually collectibles now. I'm spewing. I don't have it anymore. But anyway. Um, um, that instrument got me through, got me, got the job done, albeit not as good as this one. If you notice in the video, I'm actually mucking around with the EQ as I'm playing just to get the best sound. On the on the profile silhouette, um, there was just one tone knob, so really couldn't do much with that. And the amplification is like us bass players. If the instrument's the extension of us. The amp is also an extension of us, just as much as the instrument. So this Fender Rumble that I've got here, this is actually the amp I practiced on back in year 12. My dad got me this as a year 12 present, as an encouragement to do well, and um, I've still got it. Love that amp. It is an entry level amp, set me setting back about 600, 650 bucks back in 2005. So they're nothing flash. The tone is decent. Um, but then if you want to go next level, you can go something like this, this Ampeg BA-115 HF, I think it's called. And that'll set you back just around $1,000, a bit more. But that's a, a slightly better quality amp. And then I've actually got another Ampeg that I use on stage at Gospel City, where i part of the music team. And that's another Ampeg. But the whole point of that and me saying that is your, your quality of guitar and the quality of your amp will impact how this song comes out in the end so keep that in mind if you're going to undertake something like this no point doing it on a cheap um, $120 bass with a little amp that comes with it you know it's just um, it's just not going to work if you manage to make that work you're a you're a machine that's just gonna, I'm telling you because harmonics on the cheap guitar are not easy to achieve because the harmonic sound actually comes from the guitar being mathematically perfect. Like, so all the fret spacings, the ne length of the neck, the length between there, the nut and the bridge, um, the quality of the t uh, wood they've used, the quality of all the materials, everything comes into it um, to get those nice sounding harmonics. Otherwise, it's just, um, it's just gonna sound rubbish. You're not gonna be happy with it. I mean, you could do it, but you might not get the grades you want because the harmonics won't be as crisp. Um, on that point also, um, it's important when you do play harmonics is that to, to roll up your highs and your mids. So I've got my highs and mids rolled all the way up at the moment. Have a listen to what happens when I put them flat. Versus... So yeah, you got to have your highs and mids um, rolled right up so to make the bass sound nice and bright so these harmonics come through over the bass. You can't even ro roll your bass up so give that give it a bit that more bit depth. But I understand not all guitars have a three band EQ like this Stingray. This is why this is a bit of a beast, this guitar, I love it. Um, some of the older Stingrays had a two band, so lows and highs. This is actually lows, mids, and highs. So if you if your guitar doesn't have that, that's okay. You can roll your tone knob up to the position where you got more brightness versus the other side, which is just dull. Um, and that that side has its place when you're playing like reggae and stuff like that, or other styles. So all good there. Just make sure when you're doing harmonics, is that your mids and your highs are rolled up. Um, and my last point I wanted to make is. Songs like this, or really any song, I'm a I'm big believer in you got to make, before you play it, before you write something, before you do anything, you got to make it mean something to you. Now this song, this song means a lot to me. It's, apart from being the most memorable melody on, in, on this planet, um, and really in, in modern history, everyone, as soon as you hear Amazing Grace, everyone knows what that song is. 
I think the second most favorite, uh, memorable from what I've read is actually How Great Thou Art, another hymn. So um, this song means a lot to a lot of people. And to me, it means certain things uh, mainly to do with my faith. But there are a lot of historical things attached to this song, like the aboli ab 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 sorry, abolition of slavery in the UK, things like that. So even if you don't have religious background, you can make this song mean something to you. And just, I literally spent a good five minutes before I did my take on the video thinking about what this song is, what it means, um, getting into that before I played it. And I encourage you to do that in your year 12 solo performances. I know that you'll, you'll be nervous, there'll be a lot of things, it's a high stakes environment, but really centering yourself in that way and figuring out why you're, why you're playing the song and what this song means to you will make a huge difference to your performance because that'll come through. As I said before, the, instr the instrument is an extension of what you're doing. So if you're feeling a certain way, you won't, you, it'll come through. So that's why when you see a performer who's confident, as, a, as an audience member and watching them, you feel confident, you like watching that, you think more of that. But if you see a performer who's a bit timid and not confident in what they're doing, you feel awkward. You think, oh, I feel bad for them. So it's important to, to um, have that confidence, figure out why you're doing it, what this song means to you, and then go out and play it to your adjudicators. Yeah, anyway guys, I hope you've learnt something, hope this has been enjoyable, thank you for watching and I'll see you again later.